I'm sitting here with Hap Griffith, and Hap was a longtime employee of ETV because he started before he even finished high school, right? And that's, that's the only reason that he managed to make it to graduation. You're <laughs> still such a young man. And that you've come back now and you're helping them. But um, it sounds like I'm sure that you get excited about engineering, but I think you get a I lot do. more excited about space. And um, you Always. Even, you're even, I think you're even allowed to go on the ground pad at NASA when they oh, shoot yeah, those. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the past uh, six years or so, I've been doing launch photography for a magazine and a website down at uh, Kennedy Space That's Center. That's pretty exciting. It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. Is it make an incredible room? Absolutely. <laughs> Gosh, I bet that really is thrilling. But you say, actually, what's coming up soon next Monday in South Carolina is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It pretty much and is. And we can all do it. We don't have it, to get security is. clearance. It, that's exactly so right. So let's talk about what's happening. What kind of eclipse is it? Okay, there's two types, two main types of uh -huh. eclipses. There's an, uh, and it's all about alignments. Let's look, let's take our really high-tech uh, props here. Uh, and let's say, for instance, you're the sun. You're bright, shiny like the sun. And if, and if I were in any kind of relationship to this, you said it would be Larger It'd be huge, this, yes. Yeah. The, 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 like sun the, is, block, the sun is a million times yeah. the size of the Earth. Yeah. But let's say this softball is the Earth, All right. and let's say this golf ball is the moon, even with its little craters and everything. And when the when the Earth or when the moon moves in within the Earth's shadow, we see a, a lunar eclipse. The moon goes dark. Oh, but okay. what's going to happen Monday is on the other side here, where the, the, the moon. Sun. The moon comes b between the sun and the earth and casts a shadow. Now, it doesn't happen all the time because a lot of times the moon is up oh. here or down here and the shadow misses the okay. earth. That's okay. why it's so rare. But this time so it's, it's going to... So it's making a shadow. It's, it's just making a shadow anything. and it's yeah. going out into space. space. But this time it's actually going to hit the surface of the earth and we're at ground zero. Whoa. Uh, the United States uh, is uh, where it's going to sweep across. Uh, that's why this one's called the Great American Eclipse, because only the United States sees this one. Um, and it starts in the Pacific Ocean out near Washington State, uh -huh. comes across the United States, and goes out of South Carolina and down near Charleston, and it stops in the Atlantic. So it that's really it only is. covers mm -hmm. it only covers the United States. And the total period that it's happening is? Well, from, uh, from uh, start to finish, an eclipse uh, takes about three hours. Uh, there's there's an, an entry phase and an exit phase, and then there's the phase of totality, okay. which is really where the show is. Um, what we're going to see on Monday, starting here in South Carolina, at a little, a little bit after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, is if you use your uh, solar glasses, which we'll talk about these in just a minute, these things that make you look like Batman, uh, you'll be able to take a look directly at the sun, and a little after one o'clock, you'll see a little carving out of the sun. You'll see the moon. You won't see the moon itself, but the moon will be oh. uh, will be in front of the sun, and it'll be carving a little bit out of the mm -hmm. sun. And that'll happen for uh, about an hour or so, and then uh, as it in our area where it totally covers the sun, just before what we call totality you'll see a last little sliver of light there with a ring around the sun called the corona, that's the sun's atmosphere. And that last little bit of light along with that ring looks like a diamond ring. So they call that the diamond ring effect. Uh -huh. It's really cool. And uh, the moon is not a smooth ball like a billiard ball. It's like this golf ball. It's got mountains and craters and valleys. Yeah, and we remember valleys. that from when the lunar land was Exactly yeah, right. Was and so crazy. as it's going across, uh, the last little bits of sun will filter through the mountains oh. and the valleys, and you'll see these little flashing kind dots of, of light, of light. Uh -huh. and that's called the Bailey's beads. Uh, that'll only last for a few seconds, so be, take a look for these. Anyway, at this point, you should be taking off your glasses because it's getting dark. Now, I've got these glasses, and when I looked through them in the office, I said, these things are just junk because I couldn't see and you, turkey. and you should not see anything through them. So, they don't, are, so, so that's the way they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be that way. Totally, um, totally they, blind. It, if you can see anything through them, they're defective. Now, the only here, thing you see is, can okay. see is the sun. In here where we've got these blinding lights that make us so hot You can sweat, see a tiny I little bit of that light. But a, a okay. lamp or something that you might have in your house, you're not going to see. No. Um, okay. These cut, uh, cut the light down to one one hundred thousandths of what's coming in, in the front end comes out the back. That's so, to protect your so eyes. two pairs of sunglasses or anything no, like that? No, don't use sunglasses. Don't use two or three pairs of sunglasses. Because it's there's not, not near enough dark light enough. to make our eye protect itself. That's right. And, and we it, might actually you burn can You can do eye? damage to your eyes without knowing it because your eyes don't have pain receptors. Okay. And, now, and, and eye damage is permanent. 
So don't no. don't take chances. Use these. Well, and your eye doesn't have any feeling to let you know it's been incurred. That's, that's the right. Your eyes that's get. right. Um, but during totality, once 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 it gets dark around you, and it's going to get dark enough to see stars, okay. uh, assuming that we're not covered in clouds. Yeah. So take those glasses off and, and I'll look. be able to see that the little bit of light goes away. That's right. At which point I can take them off. That's exactly right. And what you should see, if we're not clouded out, you should see a couple of bright planets. There's fairly some bright stars. You'll see a ring of light around the, the sun. It'll be glowing. That's called the solar corona. That's the atmosphere of the sun that we don't see at any other time because the sun's so bright, it, it blinds us. And that's actually hotter than the sun itself. It's actually itself, hotter than it? the sun itself. That's right. That's where all of the little charged particles that, that fly away from the sun uh, that enter the Earth's atmosphere and cause our uh, aurora borealis, oh. that's where they come from, is that, is that solar corona. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and then, then everything reverses itself. The, the moon will move away from the sun. You need to put your glasses back, back on, on as soon as you see the first bright light of the sun. And then you'll see the, the, the sun move off of the, or the moon move off of the sun. And all that takes about three hours. Phew. Gosh. So, but during all of that, uh, it's, it's quite a show. Now, some people talk about, and some people have told me that in the past, they looked through a pinhole camera. That's right. And that they looked, and that they looked on the ground. Well, it turns out that another safe way to view the sun is basically uh, to, to view it indirectly. It turns out that, uh, that you can make a rudimentary camera by just poking a pinhole in a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard and letting it project an image of the sun onto another piece of paper. And that way you're not hurting your eyes because you're looking at an image of it on a piece of paper. So it really is very simple. It's very you simple. Can you that. can do it inside of a cardboard box yeah. and have a little theater to yourself yeah. almost. And really, I would think that um, given the fact that we've got about three hours, it might be kind of fun to do that just to It is. That's a good project, pro good project other, for kids. For kids, don't you think, to it give is. them another project? And nature has its own pinhole cameras. It does? Every, every tree that has leaves on it, you'll see uh, all this the... This time of the, year, most when, of them do. <laughs> yeah. When the, when the sunlight filters through all of the holes in the leaves, it forms little pinhole cameras, and what you're going to see is images of the crescent sun on the ground and on the walls and things that are projecting through the tree. A lot of people are kind of like you, and they're kind of camera nerds, I know. But <laughs> I'm the nerdiest of the bunch. Because you've got yeah. your own little observatory. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. But um, and is and they're going to want to take pictures. And first of all, is it safe to look at the sun through your camera? Not through lens? the camera because the the, the, the uh, it, it's basically uh, magnifying the sun's oh image, Lord. and you could burn your eyes even so faster. So don't do that. And you can damage your camera too. Um, but the thing is, you've only here in Sumter, and uh, we're about about a minute and a half uh, at, towards the center line of the path down around Santee. You've got about two and a half minutes, but that's a short period of time, and it passes in the blink of an eye. So you don't want to be piddling around with a camera yeah, set with settings yeah. unless you're a professional and you have long focal length lenses and the tracking mounts and things like that. Um, it's actually better if you're going to take pictures, take pictures of your family, of your surroundings. Things happen during an eclipse. Tell us what it's, we it's, might, tell us some of the things going we might see want to think about as we, to as, when we we're approach, uh, as we approach totality. Look, uh -huh. to, look to the west because the shadow of the moon is coming from the west. Uh -huh. uh, if you're up high, you'll see it actually coming across you the might ground. See the shadow moon? You'll see it through the atmosphere Whoa. where the humidity now, is. You'll see all, a cone. And this is, it's moving quickly. It's it? moving about 1,500 miles an hour and, wow. it, and it overcomes us and we ends up being in the shadow. So, you know, you might want to take a picture of that. Take pictures of your, your, your family because everybody's going to be oohing and ahhing. You've got some little grandchildren. I do. With you, I've I got think. three yeah, grandkids yeah, that I'm yeah. going to be with. Take pictures of them. Take the pictures of things that are unique to your situation and your yard, your pets, your family, your house that's going to go into the darkness. And then look, listen to what's going on around you. Listen to the animals. Listen to the birds will stop chirping. I mean, it's just like going into nighttime. The cicadas uh, may start. Right. Yeah. The crickets will come yeah. out. Uh, if you're on a farm, watch the, watch the cattle. They may lay down. I've, I've heard <laughs> people talk about that before. Um, well, that'll be a short night for them. Or... Right. The, the dogs start barking because the dogs know something is wrong here. It's dark in the middle of the day. This shouldn't be. And, uh, but it only lasts a couple of minutes. So, uh, so enjoy that and don't spend it fiddling with a camera or looking through an eyepiece. There are going to be plenty of pictures. Exactly. And the next day you're going to see a bazillion pictures on yeah. the internet yeah. that are going to be better than anything you could take. So spend your time 
enjoying the experience. Because the chance of an eclipse happening at any one point. That's right. Is it's from any one point on the Earth, we only see a total eclipse on average about once every 400 years because of the alignment situation and all so of that. So don't, don't waste this. By no, you, you, the, the next one that comes through Sumter, we actually have one fairly soon. It's in 2078. So put uh, that one on your that's, calendar. That's yeah. about 60 years from now. <laughs> I don't so, think so, um, be so most of us are yeah. not going to be around for that one. So well, enjoy it, this one while you well, can. Well, and one thing that I think it's fun is that PBS, of which we are so mm -hmm. proud, um, they're going to be starting when it comes in out there in the West exactly. Coast. Exactly. Nova think. is going to be live on TV on PBS on so the South Carolina ETV. So we can kind of see what it looks like. And really, if we look at some of those, hap it'll kind of give us an idea of, oh, that's that bead thing, and oh, that's that this. Exactly. Then when we see it, we'll be You'll see bam. that ahead of time. We're on, the, we're on the East Coast, so yeah. we're going to be, we'll be able to see it live on TV before we actually see it live in the sky. And I think that'll kind of prepare us and help us recognize what we're seeing while, when it happens, actually. When, that's when, correct. With, the, with good luck. Right. And, but then also, um, Burl Dacus and a host of people at our own beloved SCTV, they're going to be doing stuff, I think, while the eclipse we is in We have uh, Carolina. crews in, uh, in Clemson, I believe, in Columbia, and in Charleston. So we have, we're going to hopefully find a, a hole in the clouds to see it through. Ooh. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, I think, uh, is Nova going to kind of pull the whole thing They'll together They'll do a wrap-up that evening. So, yeah. uh, so yeah. we'll, we'll see a, a wrap-up of the whole uh, day that, that evening. And um, you actually have, you're kind of a, what, an unusual fella in that you've done this before. Back in 1970, it turns out, like I said, it, I mean, that, once in every 400 years. Once in every 400 Sumter, years, but Sumter, but, is, but Sumter special. is special because uh, back in March of 1970, we actually had a total solar total solar eclipse come through here, uh, and that's that's a rare thing uh, to have two that are only 47 years apart in the same city. But uh, yeah, I was 11 years old, and uh, and I saw it back then, and and it. It blew me away because I went to the library the next day to check and see when the next oh. solar eclipse was because I really wanted to see another one and I saw that it, this is back in 1970 now when I was 11 years old and it said that the next solar eclipse to come through here is uh, it was on August 21st, 2017 and I thought, boy, oh boy, I'm going to be an old man by then, but here we are, you know. Well, and I think one of the things that has impressed me is although you are absolutely a nerd about all this, there's no question about it. <laughs> no doubt. Rather than going out to Casper, Wyoming, where you would have the best chance, your remembrance of being 11 and the awe and remarkable feelings that you felt are such that you're not going to do that. You're going to stay here with right. As a photographer, and experience I, it Right. As you. a photographer, I had plans to be uh, just east of the Rockies, but I got to thinking, you know, with three young grandkids and a chance of a lifetime, this coming right through our hometown or right through our home state, I, I need to be with them. So, so plan to be with family and friends. That's right. This is a once in Have a lifetime. tailgate party. Yeah. And and I think you had a couple of beers that you were recommending for people. Yeah, who are a not Blue Moon be beer would be a good one. A Corona beer would be a good one. And Some how about moon pies. <laughs> uh, things like Star Crunch. And Laura uh, Lee said Sun Chips. So yeah. Sun Chips, yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's have, right. I think this is pretty wonderful. And if we go to SCE TV, there's some very Mm -hmm. um, good places there, and then you have a, a place that you recommend too. That, um, the GreatAmericanEclipse.org, excuse me, .com, .com has just about everything you could possibly want to know about the eclipse. And I think the more we spend learning about it ahead of time, the better. It is. It's it's a it's a wonderful demonstration of the clockwork of the universe. Okay. Thank you so much for coming and sharing Thank you. all this. It's Thank gonna, you. I think you're going to make it a more exciting experience for a lot of people by giving us the tips on how to enjoy it. And particularly just to sit around and enjoy it and not right. get caught, off in, caught up in a lot Keep of Keep your fingers crossed for the weather. We sure will. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay.